Good morning, everyone, my Faith Life Ministries family. I want to welcome you to the service this morning. Much different than uh, previous service, but um, nonetheless, we're gathering together now by social media or by means of the media system. Uh, I, I, uh, I've been seeking the Lord, and he gave me a message this morning uh, which we will probably be carrying out in the next few weeks. I believe it will be very helpful for you. I know it has brought revelation and insight to me. I've touched on it before. Um, so let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you for strength, for utterance, Lord, for understanding and, and opening up of our hearts, the, that spiritual understanding and knowledge and wisdom would come into your people today, Father, through your word. Lord, and I thank you for it, and we believe we receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. I know we've been on the subject of being spirit aware. I'm not departing from that subject. I'm just adding to it. Uh, this morning, you know, I, <clears throat> the, the title of today's message is Developing My Character. So um, that is really the point of this message and uh, this may be a small series where we're going. So it may seem like I'm going, it's going in other areas, but it's really pointed at developing our character because God is very much interested in developing our character and building relationship more than what we do. And we want to realize that we do need to be aware of the spirit realm. The Bible says, or Paul said, that we are to be, what, spiritually minded. And that gives us life and peace. To be carnally minded is destruction. It's death. It doesn't give us the right, put us in the right direction. So I am to be constantly aware of spirit. As we all know, God is a spirit. Jesus, though he's a man, his words are spirit. They are life. There are angels. They are spirits. There are demons. They are spirits. There are ministering spirits. There are God's armies. His hosts are spirits. And we are to walk in the spirit, not just walk in the natural or in this carnal realm. And that includes very much of developing our character because we are a spirit. Uh, if you remember, we talked about in Mark 9, the man that came, who had the lunatic son, had came to Jesus. He was very much aware of the spirit realm. Jesus was always very much aware of the spirit realm. So much that Jesus made this statement. He said, I only say what I hear my father say, and I only do what I hear my father do. So uh, we're going to go to 2 Corinthians, if you would, please, in chapter, we're going to be in 11 and 12. I'm going to start in 12. If you would, I'll give you a minute to find that. Um. Many of us, I'm going to actually be pinpointing and beginning to reveal an area where many of us have suffered defeat, unaware of, of why. We know that God is faithful to watch over his word to perform it in our lives. And just like, and he is my daddy, he's my Abba father. And just like any other father, he's looking to develop us. He's wanting us to grow up and be mature. And unlike a natural father, a natural father would tend to, uh, would like to make their children independent of us. Where God is just a little different on that, actually a lot different. He's wanting us to be more and more dependent on him here we have in second corinthians now you know start in the verse in chapter 11 in um, verse 
23. If you remember, in in verse in chapter 12, he's talking about he talks about a thorn in the flesh. And have you had any thorns in the flesh? Well, that's a figure of speech. He's going to identify these thorns, and I think you you can begin to relate with Paul and some of these thorns. These are the, he's getting ready to quote some of the manifestations of those thorns. Of course, he identifies that thorn as a messenger of Satan. Was he spiritually aware? Was he aware of things in the spirit? Oh, yes. So these are manifestations in the natural realm of that thorn or that spirit. In chapter 23, they are ministers of Christ. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labors and abundant in stripes above measure in prisons, more frequently in deaths often. From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes. Thank God we're not getting beaten with stripes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Who was behind these beatings? It was spirit, messengers of Satan. I was stoned once, I, or I was stoned three times. Most people don't survive one. I was shipwrecked a night and a day. I have been in the deep or in the, in the, in the sea. In journeys often, in perils or troubles of water, perils of robbers, perils of my own countrymen, perils of Gentiles, perils in the city, perils in the wilderness, Perils in the sea, perils among false brethren. In, you could say troubles or perils in weariness and in toil. Can we relate to any of these? Sleeplessness often. In hunger and in thirst. In fastings often. In cold and in nakedness. Besides the other things, King James says other things without which comes upon me daily, deep concerns for all the churches. Can you relate to any of these that we have had perils in our life? Maybe not in the same or the abundance that he has had, but how many of you can relate that we've had problems, things coming at us? Do you realize they are spirits? Do you, you have to realize that Satan is studying you. He studies you. He studies us. And he knows what our weaknesses are. Whenever you see the word infirmities in the Bible, it means weaknesses. Do we have weaknesses? Oh, yes, absolutely. Now, that doesn't mean we confess them. Let's not, let's not get hung up on that. We acknowledge, we recognize them. Let's go over to verse chapter 12, verse 7. He said, lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelation, a thorn in the flesh. He just got through identifying those thorns. Those thorns. Did you notice? I didn't see sickness mentioned anywhere in there because we've been redeemed from sickness. We haven't been redeemed from tribulation and troubles while we're in this world. But we have been redeemed from sickness and the curse. An abundance of revelation, a thorn was given to me. Now listen, a what messenger of Satan sent to buffet me or to pull me down, lest I be exalted or rise up above measure. In other words, there in one one application you could say there, so he wouldn't be exalted in pride. But I don't believe that's really what he's referring to there, because pride would open the door to the enemy. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. This opens up a big area where the traditions of men have denied the power of God to operate in our lives. Paul here was caught up in doing the same thing that many Christians do through religious teachings, um, false doctrines, 
assumed ideas. He's bringing the care of this thing or the problem to God. God did not tell her, is not telling him. Look at, G, look at the Lord's response. He said to him, my grace or my ability, the grace of God is very, if you are limited it very much, if you just hold to the defi definition of the favor of God, it is so much grace. That's just the beginning. The grace of God is the strength of God. It is the power of God. It is the ability of God. It is God's willingness to act on your behalf. And how do we access the grace? Through faith. Here, he is not acting in faith. The Lord said, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect or made complete in weakness. Paul was doing like many of us have done and probably still will do until we get a complete revelation and a complete uh, change or renewing of our mind in this issue. Paul was bringing his problem to God and petitioning God to do something about the problem. God responded, and he said, my grace is enough to take care of that problem. In other words, you're going to have to go to my grace. Many people are praying to God to eliminate, get rid of, or let me say, praying against the problems. We are not told to pray against the problems. He's saying here, pray for the strength to overcome the problem. I come to God based on his word. He says I'm more than an overcomer. He said by his stripes I've been healed. He said he has already given me the victory. So I pray that God would strengthen me, strengthen my spirit to overcome that problem or that weakness. Did he say, did he say my grace is sufficient for you? For my strength is made perfect is made perfect in weakness. I acknowledge, I recognize that I have had and do have many weaknesses. One is I don't know a lot of things. Two, I don't know exactly what the root of the problem is. So I go to him and I pray for strength. I go to him boldly and obtain the grace and the mercy in the time of need. I'm asking him to equip me, build me up and develop me so that my what he has already given comes alive and gets stronger in me so that I become the overcomer that he's called me to be. It's like a father and a child. He is our Abba Father. If the child, when we're little, yes, we'll go to him and daddy will probably pull up our pants. He'll give us a wind up toy and wind it up for us and say, hey, there you go. And we go, yeah, yeah. But there comes a time when he wants me to pull up my own pants, to have enough strength, have enough wisdom and insight to pull up my own pants and to begin to wind up my own toy. Do you follow me? This is God. He is the developer. I'm giving you principles here. It may look like it's like the teaching here just on a principle. It is not. It is on because God is more more interested in developing a relationship with you. He wants you to include him in everything, but he's also looking to develop you and to strengthen you. The char your character. Do you realize with, or in Hebrews, Paul also wrote through that we're in need of patience that we may do the will of God and inherit the promise, receive the promise. When I go to God, see, you can see here, look at here. Paul was running out of patience. Do you realize when you when you run out of patience, most people don't want to develop their patience. We've had bad ideas, wrong ideas, false teachings on patience. You want patience. 
Because you know, realize that when your patience run out, your character is displayed. God needs and wants to develop your character. When I go to the God and I go to him in faith, right? It's going to take patience for me to inherit that promise, for me to receive that promise. Do you remember what it said in James? And James said, count it all joy when you fall into various trials and temptations. Why? You're not being tested. Your faith is being tested. So because when your faith runs out, when your patience runs out, your faith is no good. Your, your faith just stopped. So the enemy, he knows and he studies. He knows your weaknesses. So that's where he attacks. If your weakness is pride, he will orchestrate and tempt you and put you in situations for you to boast. For you begin to exalt yourself and open up the door for him to come in. And once he gets in through that pride, now he can destroy your marriage. Now he can work on your, on your finances. Now he has access to every area of your life. That's why God wants to develop your character. You may think your weakness is cake. People say, oh, that cake is my... No. No, 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 no. We're deceived. Your weakness, what you need is strength in your spirit to overcome your flesh. Your weakness isn't the cake. The problem is the weakness, your spirit was weaker than your flesh at the moment. What you need is strength in your spirit so that you can begin to overcome. Are oh, you following me in that? I hope you do. I hope I'm not losing you. Paul here was strong in many areas. But in this one area here, where it said the cares that come upon him daily, that was, I believe, what he was referring to here, was the cares that come. Do you have cares that come upon you daily? Oh, yes, we do. All of us do. And, and we've been taught, bring all your cares, bring all your problems to the Lord. And that is so. We do. The answer is to bring you all your cares to the Lord. But what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to leave them there. Not pick them back up and carry them. I am to begin to pray for my strength to overcome those weaknesses. I don't pray against the weakness. I pray for my strength. Jesus gave us a very help. A very helpful help. In Romans 8, 26, I'll go over there as I begin to conclude. He has given us the Holy Spirit to help us in our weaknesses, our infirmities. Romans 8, 26. We don't always know what we ought to pray. That's what he says here. But some of us know what our weaknesses are. We know what some of them are. But yet we tend to pray against the problem rather than praying against or for against the weakness. In my weakness is when I am made strong. Paul said he glories in his weakness. Why? Because he realized. Now he wrote this. After he had gotten the revelation, if you read on, I'm, I'm back over in, in Corinthians 12. He goes on to say, when I am weak is when I am strong. Why? Because he's humbled himself under the mighty hand of the Lord. He's asked God to take care of that weakness. Did you know covenants are based on weaknesses? They're not based on strengths. God has recognized our weaknesses. So he said, make covenant with us and said, I will be your strength. So in humility, I go to God and I give him the problem and I pray for my strength. This is when I asked him to rise up and be my strength. Do you remember David and Goliath? Gave, David knew, he acknowledged he was a little boy. A young man. He acknowledged 
He was up against a giant. He acknowledged that giant was much stronger than him. He acknowledged that giant's weapons were much more mightier than his. But he, he put, what did he do? He put his strength in God. He put his strength in the covenant that he had made with his God. And he, that's what he declared. My God shall deliver you into my hands today. See, he's building. He acknowledges weaknesses by by magnifying the strength of God. He let God's strength be overcome. Uh, how do I want to say it? You know what I'm saying. So let us not magnify the problems, but let us magnify God in the problems. Again, here in Romans 8, 26, this is a good way to help us in the things that we don't know. As we grow in God, we are we should be developing in our character we should be developing our strengths some of the strengths like when i first came to god there were weaknesses in my life that i went to god to help me through now they have become strengths they're not weaknesses anymore there was a day you could have tempted me with certain sins when I first came to God. Today you cannot tempt me in it because God has become my strength. That's part of my life. I am girded up with strength in his ability. That was see what that is? That's development. That's character. If you're short fused, that means you are lacking patience. And it reveals character. And God is more interested in your relationship with him than he is the things you do. So he wants you to go to him continually. Here in Romans 8, 26, we'll finally get there. Likewise, the Spirit, talking about the Holy Spirit, he helps us in our weaknesses. Now, I don't, let me say this. I don't confess my weaknesses. I acknowledge I know they're there. Because why, when I confess my weaknesses, when I confess my weakness, when I declare it or say it, I am giving the enemy light or an open door into my life. When things are revealed in the spirit, it's called light. If there was an area the enemy did not know or wasn't aware of, and I confess it, now I have given him light. That's why the Bible says, let the weak say what? I am strong. We are to give the enemy no place. I don't want to shine the light in any area for him to open up, for me to open up and him to come in. Here he says, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. Why? Because I don't know what to pray for as I ought. Like I said, you may think the weakness is cake or pie. That's not the weakness. The Holy Spirit knows what the real weakness is. So he does what? He, the Spirit himself, makes intercession for us with groanings and utters, uh, with groanings which cannot be uttered. This word... Um, as actually in the Greek, there is a phrase here, helps us in our weaknesses. In the Greek, it says he takes hold together with us against. So what he's doing, he's searching, verse 27, he's searching the heart. He knows what's in your heart. He knows what the weaknesses are, but he also knows what the mind of the spirit is because then he can, so he can make intercession for you according to the will of God. See, he takes hold together with us. This is how I can become, be, begin to overcome areas that I have suffered defeat over and over and over again. Maybe there's an addiction in your life. Maybe there's a, a sin. Maybe there's a problem that you keep continually facing. And you keep bringing that problem before the Lord. And the Lord's saying... No, my grace is sufficient. I've already given you the ability and the grace to, to overcome it. Access it now by faith. Give it to me. Cast that care of it. And as long as I am praying, now here's the, here's, here's the big key. 
As long as I am praying for my strengths, he's got me covered. Did you hear me? As long as I am praying for my strength, he's got me covered, even though I've still been weak in that area. It's when I stop praying for the strength that the enemy gets access because now I'm stepping out in pride. I don't need him anymore. I don't need to be strengthened. I don't need him to help me. Do you see what I'm saying? So he's given us the Holy Spirit. And he's given us a prayer language. This is only one way to help us to overcome. If I, you got a problem or an addiction... I want to encourage you to pray with me right now. We bring it. Here is the key. Here's the answer to the thorns, to the manifestation. Here's the answer. It's over in 1 Peter 5, casting all of the cares over on him. But I don't pick them up. I don't, I don't take them back. I leave them with him. No matter what the problem is in your character or your development or the issues that we face daily. I don't know if you face all the things that Paul was facing. I know he talked about perils with his countrymen, perils with his brother. How many of you had family against you? How many of you had friends against you? How many felt like you've had the world against you? That's what Paul's describing there. But they were really spirits. So our battle is spiritual. It is not carnal. You know, to be spiritually minded. I've got to be constantly aware that I'm not battling people. I'm not battling these issues. I'm battling, my battle is to lay hold of the victory through God. Do you follow, do you, do you follow me? That He is my strength. He's my shield. He's my rock. He's my God. He's my fortress. He's my healer. He's my deliverer. See, that's what David was saying. My God shall deliver you into my hands. He's taking the victory over in the spirit because he's girding himself up with strength, with God. To be carnally minded, carnal comes from the word carne, spirit, uh, Spanish, I think they call it carne, carnal, meat. In other words, the Bible, this is kind of a silly way or could be offensive way of saying it, meathead. Being a meathead will not give you the victory. You've got to be spiritually minded. Casting all your cares. Let's, let's, will you pray with me? You've got the purpose. I know that, that some of this may disagree with some of your previous ideas, but I would encourage you to take the word. Don't take my opinion. Get in here and begin to read the word and let God reveal this to you because this is an area that we've allowed the enemy to deceive us. Even the man that had the demonic uh, oppressed boy, the lunatic son that we talked about in Mark 9. He knew that that was a spirit. Did you see what he did? He brought the problem to Jesus, and Jesus did the same thing that he did with Paul. He turned around and put it back on the man and said, if you can believe, all things are possible to you. And then the guy said, yes, Lord, I believe. And then what? Help me. The Amplified Version says, Help me with my weakness of faith. Did you catch that? He identified a weakness and he brought that weakness before God and God strengthened him in his faith and he got the victory. That's what he's telling you and I to do, to begin to walk and live in the spirit, not so much the carnal realm. So let's pray. And I want you to pray with me. Whatever situation, whatever obstacle, whatever the spirit is that is in opposition against you, 
Father, we bring that care before you. I bring this addiction. I bring this weakness to you. I give it to you. I cast the care of that weakness on you, Father. For your word declares that you are my strength. You are my strong high tower. You are my answer. You are. You grant us the grace in a time of need. So, Father, we're asking you for the strength. We're asking you for the mercy right now to strengthen us. Help us in doing our part. Cover us. Show us the way we should go. Let your strength arise, Lord, as we, as we humble ourselves, Lord, and we lay at your feet right now. Let your strength be our victory. And we thank you for it. We receive the victory and the strength now. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, so many times we just automatically assume things. And here's what I mean. Jesus said, I only do what I see my Father do. I only say what I hear my Father say. And so many times we, we have these, we, yes, we have learned Scripture and that is good. But you know, this is a big book. Which scripture do I apply? Sometimes, you know, we automatically go, well, I come against that mountain. I speak against that mountain. Or the prayer of agreement. Lord, we, I agree. What to get so-and-so? No, agree with me. We'll pray. We got the victory. Lord, we, your word says, ask and I'll ask and I shall receive. But yet so many times we've not gotten the victory because... Maybe that wasn't the right application. I've got to go to God and find out the application. Go to him and get the wisdom. That's what James was talking about over there. When my faith is tried. Go, and he goes on to talk about any man lacks wisdom. Let him ask and let him ask in faith not wavering. This is where my patience gets involved. To be developed. I go and I ask. What is the direction? He may tell me the prayer of agreement. He may tell me, speak to the mountain. But just like Jesus did, Jesus did not do it until he heard the answer. That's my strength. We should not assume to do, make application until we've exercised our faith and a patience to obtain that strength. Did you know wisdom is strength? His direction is strength. I'm, I, I'm, I'll, I'll continue going on. Please join with me as we pursue this development. This is the area that a lot of people have lacked because when you grow, there's growing pains. And developing our character is big with God. Uh, um, as I close, I'll share this with you. As a, It's the Lord gave me like a vision, if you will. I don't mean I was caught up in the whatever. I know that oil is often referred to in the Bible as the anointing. And I'm not taken away from that. But the Lord showed me a lamp. And there's a flame in that lamp. Our character is the oil for that flame. If there's no oil, there's no fire, there's no flame, there's no light. If my if the oil is contaminated, the light is flickering. It's maybe not even burning. That God is saying our character is the oil for the fire. And I want the fire. I want the fire of God in my life. I want that anointing. And I know you do too because it's that anointing that destroys yokes and removes burdens. So go with me on this mission in developing our character. God bless you. I love you. Use your patience to get the answer. Continue to pray in tongues. If you don't know how to pray for anything else in your weakness... 
pray in tongues. Don't stop. Don't disconnect until you get the victory. Amen. God bless you. I love you. We're praying for you. And I hope to see you face to face in person. Amen.